So Dave will go. So brief change of plan. Dave will go back. Dave will go back to yapping again, and I guess what. While we've got while we've got everybody, okay, it's 10:52, and we're looking to break for lunch when uh, noon. Okay, that's probably about right. Why don't we actually Why don't we actually take a deep breath and go bang it, you know, and go bang out some, you know, bang out some actual code here. You know, this is the all right. Now we're going to actually build a plugin and look at all the pieces and look at a graph node and really say, okay, um, this is how we. Uh, you know, now that you have some idea how to drive the infrastructure just the least little bit, let's let's look at what it takes to build something. And uh, the the rule one in this sport is that although the graph nodes are all very regular, no two of them are actually alike. And the example I'm going to give here is a pretty simple one that works in a simple way. You know, you'll, you'll recognize what's going on with it in a second, and you can laugh at how low performance it is, because uh, one certainly didn't work at coding it very hard. But now, the, uh, the story is, let's go over here. And we can we can make ourselves a directory any old place. I'm going to pick. Um, let's just go make ourselves a guy called. Um, I'm going to make a, a, a directory called tutorial and cd. Now the next thing for all all the one Emacs fan in the room is to say I'm going to actually use my uh, Emacs skeleton uh, setup to blat out a whole blat out all the source code for a plugin in one motion. What this is this is fundamentally identical to the sample plugin and that if you find yourself not wanting to deal with Emacs, which sounds like about 97% of the human race irritatingly for me, um, this stuff can be I'll I'll figure out a better way of packaging this stuff up so everybody else can can run it, but follow along and if you want what I'm really doing is replicating the sample plugin um, through uh, kind of a, what amounts to a name mapper. In other words, what is the skeleton really doing for you? It's mostly saying you don't want this. You don't want n, n number of stupid link collisions because everything you know everything's called Dave the way everyone in the room seems to be somehow. So at any rate, uh, all right. Uh, let's first of all let me show you where the skeleton stuff actually is. Build root. Oh, thank you. Emacs. Okay, I have quite a little selection of skeletons here. The one that I'm going to actually run is the plug-in all-in-one guy. There are smaller skeletons for things like doing CLI commands, config functions, dual loop, periodic functions. Uh, the pipeline skeleton we may actually want to look at after a while. It's the I have a computation that has a hell of a lot of dependent reads that I need to cover, and I'm going to do that by um, uh, you know I'm going to do that by by actually making a formal pipeline. It's kind of a it's kind of a cool thing. You'll see rapidly how to how to drive it. Um, making a full plugin comes in a lot of pieces, but at any rate, uh, with no further ado, let's actually go run it. And in Emacs, it's Meta X. Uh, okay, if you, if you, if any, is there anybody in the room in Emacs following along? Okay, cool. Well, just basically go, go uh, meta x, meta x eval buffer uh, in, in all scale.el, and you'll see it'll, it'll yap that it's loading some stuff. Then go back, and here we are in tutorial meta x make plugin. It's going to ask you one question What's the plugin name? How about MacSwap? And lots of files appear. Let's let's not look at any of them just yet, but but in Emacs save them all out. And what I've ended up getting out of here, um, um, whoop, let's just get make sure we're in the right place. Is a, is a directory called MacSwap plugin. And in MacSwap plugin, there's stuff including configure.ac, makefile.am, and a MacSwap directory which has a bunch of files in it. Let's look briefly at makefile.am. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a, a libtool library, which is the plugin, comprising maxwap.c, which is the place we're going to, you guys remember when I was yapping about um, uh, load one plugin, uh, you know, three hours ago? At any rate, um, maxwap.c is the guy that has the magic 
entry point that I look for by name that convinces me it's really a plug-in and not, um, you know, not somebody's, you know, dirty gift that they threw in the wrong directory, uh, <laughs> as opposed to uh, the real thing. Node.c is the actual honest-to-God graph node, and the plugin API file, which is uh, built, uh, you know, plugin.api.h, which is actually a built file, has the binary API, def uh, binary API definition that's used to control the thing. The .api, this .api.h rule is actually the thing that cooks the API definition. And, you know, mumble, there's some exported headers so that other people can depend on this and can know about its APIs in, in a way. There's um, an install data hook that literally, if run as root, will go take the .so's, the, both the plugin for the test tool and also the plugin for the data plane, throw them in the right directories. So this is kind of the soup for nuts. You don't have to think about it too hard uh, way of doing it. Now, again, what? Yeah, it's already there. All, all, all the, this is okay. The, the the way the plugin skeleton came into being involves the uh, sample plugin and a whole bunch of going and finding all the places where sample appeared. If you can if you can well imagine it, the skeletons are actually really easy to develop and they're they're absolutely worth doing. Uh, one can imagine. You know, if folks have favorite templating schemes that they like, you know, for splatting the sort of stuff down that, that work independently and don't piss off VI users. Oops, there's my first swear for the day, I think. Um, it would be, uh, you know, it would be a great thing for either someone to uh, learn enough Emacs to convert the skeletons or most likely say, hey, dude, you really want to use this framework for just this sort of splat down, splat down a template. I'm... As is probably obvious, I've been I've been programming for about a million years, or or since you know snakes had legs. The oldest machine I programmed actually had a plug board, to be truthful about it. So um, I tend to find something that might have been invented in 1983 and use it forever. Well, I think you know Emacs actually predates VI, believe it or not. Um, the you know at the AI lab, so on and so forth. But at any rate, I'll shut up. Uh, this uh, the, the thing we need to do here is to say, okay, we have configure.ac. Let's look at that for a half a second. And it's really, it's really very simple. About all you're telling it is whether you want to use the plugin toolkit or not. Um, so what we need to do is to actually cook this into the auto tools files, which is real tough. Auto, type carefully. And just go auto reconf it right there. And then um, the auto tools get done. Here you are. At this point, you just do makedir build cd build dot dot slash configure. Now, notice you you will have needed to install the um, say it in English, Dave. Install the uh, the development package, uh, which you probably all did, or which the vagrant file all did for you. At any rate, so here you go, configure it, that was tough, make, and that was tough. And now all we need to do is as root do a make install there, and it'll actually throw the plugins in the right place. And notice for, for simple development, that's about what your compile time loops like the first time when it isn't hitting in C cache. We should just do it, we should just do it again sometime. But the, uh, the, the bottom line is in this environment, you can turn fixes really, really, really rapidly. Um, let me get rid of that window and go track down the um, the other one. Oh, ah. Um, uh, well, the uh, if if you're watching real carefully, there's one and only one plugin path, which is actually in user lib. Uh, again, we you know not hard to change. The plugin path actually is a, a command line parameter if you want. But what it, what what the the the, the generated make file there is going to do? If you look at that um, you know at that install target right at the bottom of makefile.am, it is a real fixed idea of where it's putting the stuff, uh, which kind of rhymes with with what the engine will do. So if we were to see, uh, uh, oh, where am I? I'm in. CD, um, where did it, yeah, where did I, where did I drop the stupid thing? Um, oh, don't tell me I just did this at the host level. What an idiot. Ugh, I couldn't have done that, could I have? 
Um, okay. Uh, oh, no, it's in, uh, I somehow, ah, I, I see what I did. I'm sorry. I'm just freaking myself out here, folks. Yeah. Ah, here we go. And then um, if I, at this point, CD build and make install, you know, now it's actually thrown the goods where they need to go and then start VPP. Oh. Okay, at this point in the game, the expectation is the plugin will be there. So if we were to just tell that there, um, one of the one of oh yeah, here's another trick you want to know, which is show API uh, help. Now one quick way of telling is the thing there. You'll notice the last message in there tells me that the plug the plugin's shown up and the, and that uh, you know everybody's happy if you look in dmessage or if you start the uh, start the engine let me show you another trick while I'm here um, which is that we can say stop um, um, let's see um, VPE now if you if you run the thing Unix interactive you get a bunch more spew on, on the console. At any rate, you'll notice, uh, you know, your friend load one plugin says, okay, yeah, the max swap plugin actually showed up and loaded. Now let's just for giggles um, actually go, uh, you know, just from the debug CLI, the, the API test tool can also do all of these things and you might as an exercise fiddle with it later since you've seen the tool. Um, we built a plugin which I'm gonna go through in detail for the API test tool. Uh, which can which can also do that one and only one message, you know, message number two sixteen, the max swap enable disable. Uh, oh. Enable. Okay. Oh yeah, zero eight zero. And that should work. And now what we end up doing is we say set int. Well, actually, it just so, you know, this is a little bit superfluous. One seventy two dot. Oh, actually, it hardly matters. Let's just turn the interface on. Zero eight zero hop. And now, uh, let's give it 50 for giggles. And now I'm going to go find a way and try and, uh, whoops, oh yeah, that's real useful. Um, okay. Oh, actually, let's see. Um, oh, how, okay. I, I really better go configure it. Um, let's go figure out what, it, what what IP address it wants to have. Otherwise, nothing is going to really play. All right, convincingly. Ah, there we go. Notice the uh, set int. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, great. Set. Int. Zero, right, show IP fib. Now, if we were to go start pinging that dude again, it won't actually work. 172.28.1. And you'll see not very much is happening, and you might wonder why that is. So let's, uh, let's, uh, now. What's going on here is that the max swap plugin is really complicated. It's going to swap the MAC addresses and throw the packet right back out the interface that came in. It's, the code itself is a little bit interesting, but at this point in the game, you say, okay, it's an ARP request, you know, mumble to the broadcast. The plugin is wicked stupid. Um, notice that we're real sure it got there because the packet tracer for it says, oh yeah, I, got, I, got a, I received a packet on software IF index 5. And what it does is it swaps the MAC address, which you can see from the trace. 
and throws it right back out the interface that came in. If I was to run Wireshark, you'd see it. Um, trust me on this point, it's actually doing about what it's supposed to.